Hey guys, how's it going? Hope you're having a wonderful week like always. Today I am continuing with my hot and sexy and steamy series. I'm also continuing with my Jennifer Lopez discography and journey. And we've made it to our second studio album from 2001, 20 years ago called J-Lo. Now it does say here that J-Lo is her biggest selling album to date selling over 8 million copies worldwide. And prior to releasing the album, Jennifer knew how important it was to stay fresh, wanting to innovate the music industry. She made the decision to tweak her public image, dyeing her hair, and changing her stage name to J-Lo. Now I am looking at the track list for J-Lo, and there are 18 tracks that I'll be listening to. Actually, I'll only be listening to 17 because I won't be listening to track number 18, I'm Real, featuring Ja Rule, the murder remix. I typically don't listen to remixes during these videos. So I'm only listening to 17 tracks, and the only tracks I recall hearing are tracks number 1 and 2, Love Don't Cost a Thing, and I'm Real. I also recall hearing track number 5, Ain't It Funny. All the other tracks are brand new to me, but like always, if I start listening to a song and it sounds familiar, I'll let you guys know. Now, we did kick off the video with track number one, Love Don't Cost a Thing, and of course, this song takes me back to elementary school, and it's a great Jennifer Lopez song. I don't remember the last time I heard this song. I don't really listen to this song a lot um, when it comes to Jennifer Lopez songs, but when I do hear it, it does instantly take me back to when I was in elementary school. I also really enjoy the lyrics of the song. They're a lot of fun to sing along to. I think they're really cute. I think I'm gonna spend your cash, I won't. Even if you were broke, my love don't cost a thing. Think I wanna drive your beds, I don't. If I wanna floss, I got my own. Even if you were broke, my love don't cost a thing. So it looks like she's singing about this guy who is showering her with gifts and money a car, a Mercedes Benz, and all these lavish things, but she's saying that her love doesn't cost a thing. So you can't buy JLo, you can't buy her love, you need to spend time with her, you need to get to know her. You can't just throw money at her and expect her to love you. She's not a stripper, she doesn't need a sugar daddy, and she's a very independent woman. Uh, that's one thing I come to realize about Jennifer just from listening to her music is she does come across as someone who's very independent and doesn't need a man, she doesn't need anyone else to support her, she can do it on her own. Now some people were thinking that this song could perhaps be about Sean Combs, Sean Diddy Combs, the person who she was dating at the time, and at the time of the song's release, Jennifer was transitioning into a sex symbol, and she was in a relationship with Sean Combs. So overall, I just think this is a wonderful pop song. For anyone to listen to, honestly, anyone can listen to this song. Mad, woman, gay, straight, it's just so catchy, it's a lot of fun, and the lyrics are great. Anyway, um, let's move on to track number two, I'm Real. This version of the song sounds much different from the version I remember. Okay, that was track number two, I'm Real. And this was a song that, going into it, I do recall hearing it before, obviously when I was a kid, but I just I couldn't remember what it sounded like. Um, so it was gonna be a great refresher, but this version of the song doesn't ring a bell. Um, this isn't the version I remember hearing, so I'm coming to the realization that the version I remember hearing is I'm Real featuring Ja Rule, the murder remix. So I do want to briefly check out that remix. 
This is the version I remember. Yes, this is my childhood. Oh my god. Anyway, um, uh, this is the version of the song I remember, and I do prefer the murder remix with Ja Rule over the album version. I did like the album version, kind of. I really liked the production on the album version. It kind of was reminding me of Jad Jackson's All For You album. The album version is definitely more poppy, um, so I liked it. I mean, I would listen to the album version again. I just prefer the version with Ja Rule, the murder remix. And the lyrics of both songs are also quite different. They're almost like two completely different songs, which is very rare for a remix. You don't really come across a remix of a song that sounds completely different from the original version. You like the way I dress, the way I wear my hair, show me off to all your friends, and baby, I don't care. Just as long as you tell them who I am. Tell them I'm the one that made you give a damn. And in the murder remix, they're saying the way you walk, the way you move, the way you talk, Cause I'm real. The way you stare, the way you look, your style, your hair. Cause I'm real. And I can't go on without you. Now, I'm real. The murder remix was a big hit. Um, but there was much controversy surrounding the song after the song's release. Despite the success of I'm real, there was a controversy over the use of the original single's sample and the structure of the song. The original song contains an uncredited sample from Yellow Magic Orchestra's 1978 hit, Firecracker. The Firecracker sample was originally planned and licensed to be used for Mariah Carey's Lover Boy, which I know about this controversy because when I was going on my Mariah Carey discography journey, I listened to her Glitter album, and a lot of you let me know in the comments about this controversy. And we all know that there's been a decades-long beef between Jennifer Lopez and Mariah Carey. They really don't like each other. The whole I don't know her meme from Mariah when someone asked her about Jennifer Lopez, Mariah was like, I don't know her. Upset by the conduct of Lopez and her ex-husband, Mariah featured a reference to the song on the remix of her single Lover Boy. There is a verse in Mariah Carey's Lover Boy during the Bratz rap section, where they go, hate on me as much as you want to, you can't do what the fuck I do. Bitches be emulating me daily. Now in 2020, Mariah Carey did release the original version of Loverboy with the firecracker sample on her album from the Rarities, which I did listen to. I actually did a video of me listening to her Rarities album for the first time, and I did listen to that song. And continuing with the controversy of the song, there were a lot of African-American communities who were outraged by Jennifer and her use of the racial slur. I'm also thinking of um, this past New Year's Eve. I forget which station it was on, but I think it was in Times Square or something, and Jennifer was singing. Um, this was New Year's 2020, and Mariah was being interviewed by someone. I forget who she was being interviewed by. I think she was being interviewed by... Andy Cohen and Anderson Cooper on CNN. And as they were interviewing Mariah, Mariah could actually hear Jennifer singing in the background, which was really funny. It was almost like they purposely timed Mariah's interview with the moment that Jennifer was singing. And Mariah said, what's going on in the background? I'm hearing music. But anyway, let's move on to track number three, Play.
I love that part. Yeah! Fuck yeah. Okay, that was track number three, Play. Yes! Where was this song my entire life, honestly? Um... Wow, this was this was a great song. I love the chorus. Um, the lyrics are nothing to really write home about, honestly, but who cares? Um, <laughs> the production is fire, and her voice, the sassiness, and it's a lot of fun. I really enjoy myself. I grab a guy and move my feet. He's playing my song. Play, come on, play that song. Play it all night long. Just turn it up and turn it on. Because I want to be dancing all night long. So the song is very straightforward, it's a club song, and it's a lot of fun, and I would definitely go back to the song again. I particularly like the part where it goes, cause I wanna be dancing all night long. Now Play was released as the second single from the album, and I don't recall ever hearing this song. Now it says here that initially the album, J.Lo, was supposed to be called A Passionate Journey. No, no. <laughs> I'm so happy she changed it, or whoever changed it to J-Lo. A Passionate Journey. I, I don't like that title. <laughs> so I don't really have much to say about the song other than it's a lot of fun. So we are going to move on to track number four, Walking on Sunshine. Kinda just keeps going on and on and on, doesn't it? <laughs> okay, that was track number four, Walking on Sunshine. And I won't lie, I thought this was gonna be a cover of the, um, what is it? I'm walking on sunshine, whoa! The song you hear in, like, diaper commercials all the time, and, like, the child's running around and they're walking on sunshine, I guess because they were able to take a crap in their diaper, and now they're all happy. But Jennifer's song, Walking on Sunshine, couldn't be further from that song. Um, I really like the production on the track. That was the highlight. But when it came to the lyrics and melody and chorus, I didn't really like it. I probably won't listen to this song again. Obviously, this song and this whole album in general is geared towards teenagers and young girls. Um, so I don't know, maybe if I was 15 years old back in 2001, I would have enjoyed the song a lot more. We're walking on sunshine in the middle of the night and it feels like I'm somewhere above the sky. Hi, hi, hi. It's a sweet song, it's a cute song, I guess, but... No. <laughs> This kind of sounds like a filler track, I won't lie. I also didn't really like JLo's voice on the song. Um, this does sound like a very commercial album, which is understandable. She needs to break into the mainstream. Um, but I will say this does sound a lot more commercial than her first album on the six. It's just more poppy and almost bubblegum pop, and it's a very feel-good album so far. But anyway, let's move on to track number five, Ain't It Funny. Okay, that was track number five, Ain't It Funny, and this doesn't sound like 
the song I remember, or maybe my memories escaping me. Maybe I heard a remix of the song, but there was something about the title of this track, Ain't It Funny, that was ringing a bell in my head. But the song itself doesn't ring a bell at all. It sounds very new to me, so I don't think I've ever heard this song before, but I don't know why the title of the song rang a bell. Ain't it funny? I don't know. This was another great song, and once again, I really enjoyed the production, and I liked the chorus. It's really catchy, it's a lot of fun, and I really enjoyed it. Ain't it strange how fate can play a part? Ain't it funny how some feelings you just can't deny? And you can't move on even though you try. And she also says, Just tell me that you understand and feel the same. This perfect romance that I've created in my mind. I've lived a thousand lives, each one with you right by my side. But yet we find ourselves in a less than perfect circumstance. It says that the song was written for the romantic comedy The Wedding Planner, which did star... Jennifer Lopez and Matthew McConaughey. Now, I've actually never seen this movie before. I think I've seen it on streaming services like Netflix, but it didn't really appeal to me enough to want to click on the movie and watch it. But after listening to this song, I might want to watch it now. I will also say that the chorus of this song did kind of remind me of a Britney Spears song. It just didn't pack as much punch as a Britney Spears song, in my opinion. So we are going to move on to track number six, Carino. Okay, that was track number six, Carino, and I really enjoyed myself listening to this song. It was hot, steamy, and warm. It was um, very much Latin-inspired. I like the Spanish. Um, it was really nice. I really do like Latin songs that are sung in Spanglish, so there are both English and Spanish lyrics and vocals. It's nice for someone like myself, who only speaks English, to kind of be able to sing along to the lyrics. Oh baby, when I get near you, I can't control what I'm feeling, baby. I got so much love to give you that I would probably want you all the time. So this is a very sexy song. Need to feel your touch, never get enough, so on and so forth. So I really enjoyed myself. So we are gonna move on to track number seven, Come Over. Okay, that was track number seven, Come Over. And I don't need to explain to you what this song means. Um, Jennifer is, or I should say J-Lo is, um, she's horny. <laughs> she wants you to come over and she wants you to kiss her thigh and she wants to kiss your lips, body next to mine. Sugar Rush keeps me high. Sweet kiss on my thigh. I want to make love baby. Now obviously there is a difference between just fucking and making love and she's obviously alluding to something much more sensual 
um, and more intimate and more slow and passionate. Um, you know, the soft caresses and the soft, tender kisses on her thigh, and I don't know why I did that. <laughs> wow! She's not talking about that kind of love. I mean, that, what, what's happening to this video? This was just a very sensual song. I was getting Janet Jackson vibes. Now, if you've listened to Janet Jackson's discography, you will know that Janet has some really raunchy and sensual and explicit songs, and this was, this was like Janet Jackson light. Um, but it's a very sensual song. It's the type of song you play when you're about to make love to someone by candlelight and the soft satin sheets with the rose petals around you. And it's just a very romantic song. Come over, one, you come to my room for a little game. To you, I'll do very erotic things. I want to make love, babe. Very slowly. So she wants to do it very slow and passionately. Every inch counts. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to track number eight, We Gotta Talk. Okay, that was track number eight, We Gotta Talk, and this is a very self-explanatory song. Um, talk to you, baby. Oh, baby, come and talk to me together. We can work this out. We got a love thing we're talking about. So she's saying, come talk to me. We can work this out. Don't try to sweet talk me with those nasty words you say. Blah, blah, blah. So I like the song lyrically. I like what it stands for. We gotta talk. Let's try to talk this through and talk this out. Um, she's not very happy. The way you tricked me, you know that wasn't right. So it's not right the way you treated me, but let's talk about it, so on and so forth. Typical relationship stuff. Um, I liked it. I like the chorus. I do like, um, I like the vocals too. I really did enjoy the song. I would listen to it again. It's just not one of my favorites on the album. I really did like the harmonies on the song though. Other than that, I don't really have much to say about it. So let's move on to track number nine. That's not me. Okay, that was track number nine, That's Not Me, and the chorus, that build-up, um, was amazing. I really liked it, and this is an aggressive song in ways. She's saying how she's no longer going to be passive. I can't sit and be passive, won't tolerate no more. I tried so hard to be what you wanted me to be. If it can't be 50-50, then you know that it don't fit me. I can't give you all that's in me, because baby, that's not me. So this does seem to be one of the themes of the relationship. It seems to be a bit of a toxic relationship, and um, they seem to be fighting. She can't be the perfect girl. She can't just sit here and be passive. She needs to stand up for herself. Um, you can't buy her love. And this goes back to track number one, that love don't cost a thing. So obviously, the main story of this album is this relationship. I was going to say how this song might be about Sean Diddy Combs, the guy she was dating at the time, 
But the song was actually, it says it was co-written by Diddy, so I don't know, maybe he wrote the song about her, maybe. I don't know, it's, it's very strange. It's the fact that they were in a relationship together and he's writing songs like this and then they soon broke up after the album's release. It's just very... It's very odd. So overall, I really did enjoy this song, and I would definitely go back to it. But I will say, I'm not really enjoying Jennifer's vocals on this album. I don't think her vocals are very strong at all on this album, unfortunately. Her singing definitely isn't the highlight of the album. It's more so the production I'm really enjoying. And the melodies. The melodies on this album are great. There are a couple misses so far in my opinion, but overall, I am enjoying this album, I'm just not enjoying it as much as her on the sixth album. So we are gonna move on to track number 10, Dance With Me. I'm not really feeling it in my soul. <laughs> Please stop. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Okay, that was track number 10, Dance With Me, and... <sighs> I didn't like this song. Um, It's definitely one of my least favorite songs on the album, along with track number 4, Walking On Sunshine. This is just a very lazy, generic-sounding pop song. Lyrically, it's extremely lazy. So let's go out tonight and we can leave all our cares behind. Dance the night away, party till the sun comes up, so grab a friend, get on the floor. This song definitely doesn't make me want to dance or have a good time. There's nothing really memorable about this song and I definitely wouldn't listen to it again. I mean, I like the intention behind it. It's supposed to make you dance and just... It's supposed to be just a frivolous, fun dance song. Um, but... It wasn't fun. <laughs> but anyway, let's just move on from this song. Uh, track number 11, Secretly. do to me you just want to kiss me <sighs> wow janet jackson who honestly um you could tell i mean the song was definitely inspired by janet jackson this does sound like a janet jackson slow burner even jennifer's vocals were reminding me of Janet, the way she was whispering into my ear, and this was a very seductive song. It was seducing me. Secretly, I'm wanting you, and I'm hoping you want me to. I smell your scent across the room, and I can't wait to get next to you. <sighs> I wasn't expecting so many sexy and romantic songs on this album. Uh, track number 7, Come Over, and now track number 11, Secretly. I mean... They're pretty hot steamy, I won't lie. I can see why some people would like this song, because it is a very slow, drawn-out song. Um, it's typically 
Not really a song I will listen to again, to be honest with you. It's sexy to listen to for the first time, but there really isn't a lot of replay value of this song unless you are having a sexy time with someone and you want some background music. I mean, this song, this song will get you laid. It really does set the mood. So let's move on to track number 12, I'm Gonna Be Alright. Okay, that was track number 12, I'm gonna be alright, and, um, I, I mean, obviously, I probably wouldn't listen to this song again, I don't think it's very memorable, it does sound like a filler track, and compared to a lot of the other songs on the album, this song just doesn't really stand out to me, it just sounds very generic, it just, it's one of those songs that are just, it's just there on the track list, you know, it's just a song you come across on the track list and you play it once, you're like, okay, that was fine, and you just never listen to it again. I like what she's singing about in the song. I used to say I couldn't do it, but I did it. After telling everybody that I wasn't with it, though it brings tears to my eyes, I can feel it. And I know inside, I'm gonna be alright. I said I couldn't do it, but I did it. So, I like the intention behind what she's singing about. Um, but to me, that's not enough for me to want to listen to the song again. So it looks like this is the second song on the album that has controversy surrounding it. Controversy ensued over the radio and album versions of this song. Epic Records decided to place Nas on the radio version due to his popularity at the time instead of 50 Cent. 50 Cent became angry at former friend Nas, and Nas threatened him, stating, So he's like a kid living in a hip-hop fantasy world. J-Lo is a friend of mine. If she wants to do a record, I'm going to do a record with her. 50 was like a little brother to me. And in response, 50 Cent said, um, he just slammed the collaboration that Jennifer did with Nas. And Nas stated, to sum it all up, 50 is still a new artist. I would say he's got a good five to six more albums before I can really respond to him. I guess a lot of people saw something in this song that I didn't because it was a single and it did reach number 10 on the Billboard Hot 100. So I don't know, maybe I need to listen to the remix version of the song with Nas. But when it comes to the album version, I just... I don't know, I just didn't really care for it. But anyway, let's move on to track number 13, That's The Way. Okay, that was track number 13, That's The Way, and, um, uh, I liked this song. It was very catchy, it was very repetitive and catchy, it really does get stuck in your head. Um, I would maybe listen to it again, um, I don't know, like, I liked listening to it for the first time, I just don't know if I would always go back to this song again. It is a solid pop song, in my opinion, I feel like this whole album is pretty solid when it comes to being a pop album, so... I liked it, I just, I would maybe listen to it again. I promise I can make you happy, and that's the way our love should be. Baby, I can give you anything if you promise to be with me. I promise I can make you happy. That's the way our love should be. Everybody 
So I did briefly go back to track number 12 once again. I didn't listen to the album version again. I listened to the remix version on YouTube because it's not on the album. And I do prefer the remix version. This is a similar experience I had with um, I'm Real, the album version. I did like the album version of I'm Real. It was very poppy. I like the production, but I did prefer the... Uh, murder remix with Ja Rule. So now we're gonna move on to track number 14, Dab, Touch Me. Now this is a duet with Cheyenne. Okay, that was track number 14, Dabe Touch Me, and this was a duet with Cheyenne, and the song was in Spanish, obviously, and I really enjoyed it. It's very catchy, and I don't know who this Cheyenne is, so I did have to look him up, and he is a Puerto Rican Latin pop singer and actor. As a solo artist, Cheyenne has released 21 solo albums. 21? Oh my god. It sold over 50 million records worldwide, making him one of the best-selling Latin artists of all time. Um, I definitely need to check out his work. I don't think I've ever heard of him before. This was a great feel-good song, and uh, I got my body moving, and I don't have much to say about it other than I really did enjoy it. So we are going to move on to track number 15, Sia Se Akabo. I know I mispronounced that. Um, Saya Se Akabo. I tried. So let's get into it. Okay, that was track number 15, Saya Se Akabo, and this was another great Spanish song. I like the chorus, and I don't understand the lyrics, obviously, the lyrics aren't Spanish, but that didn't prevent me from dancing along to the song, so it was hot, steamy, and I enjoyed it. So let's move on to track number 16, Pleasure Is Mine. Okay, that was track number 16, Pleasure Is Mine, which was a European bonus track, um, as is track number 17, I'm Waiting. Um, but when it comes to track number 16, Pleasure Is Mine, I mean, it's a decent pop song, I guess. I think the problem I have with this album and many pop albums that are as bloated as this, I mean, there are 17 songs on this album, excluding the remix of I'm Real. There are 17 tracks, and when it comes to a pop album like this, some of the songs just start blurring together, and some of them just start sounding alike, production-wise, and the melody, so it's not that this is a bad song, it just sounds like a lot of other J-Lo's songs, and some of these songs are just kind of blurring together in my head, and they're starting to sound alike. I definitely feel like this album is a little too long. It didn't need to be 17 tracks. I know this is the deluxe edition, 
But still, 17 tracks for a Jennifer Lopez album from 2001. I don't know, it just it just seems very bloated. I don't really have anything else to say about the song, so let's just move on to track number 17. I'm waiting. Oh, I like that. Okay, and that was the final track of the album, track number 17, I'm Waiting. And this was a hot song, I won't lie. I really enjoyed the production. Um, I liked it. You know what? I would maybe listen to this song again. I thought it was pretty cool. It's still nothing to really write home about, but I can really appreciate the production on this track, and I thought it was fun to listen to. I'm not gonna lie though, I don't know if you can tell, but I am kind of over this album. Like I said already, it is quite long, and uh, this album didn't need to be 17 tracks, to be honest with you. Um, it's just too long, it's too bloated, and too many of the songs just kind of blur together, and it's just... I'm kind of over this album though. That's not to say that I didn't like the album, I still liked it, but it was just too long in my opinion. If it was shorter, maybe like, I don't know, 12 to 14 tracks maybe? So that was all 17 tracks of J-Lo by Jennifer Lopez, and um, I enjoyed I enjoyed this album. I didn't like it as much as her first album on the 6th. This album is definitely more commercial sounding, it's more pop. Um, and I really enjoyed the production. The production of this album was the highlight. Um, it was fire, it got my body moving, and I could really appreciate the production on this album. I did like the lyrics to an extent. The lyrics on this album are really nothing to write home about. I prefer the lyrics on her other album on the 6th than the lyrics on this album. I also didn't think her vocals on this album were as good as her first album. Um, her vocals kind of just faded into the background. At times, her vocals were just kind of just noise, and, um, it's like, I don't know, I just wish there was more oomph to her vocals. Now, I know Jennifer isn't the greatest vocalist in the world. Um, she isn't known for her singing, like, her actual vocals. Um, she's known for her dancing and, um, her melodies and her choreography, um, being absolutely gorgeous. Um, but she isn't really known for her vocals, but I just wish there was more of to her singing. There are quite a few songs on this album I would go back to. There are songs on this album that have a lot of replay value. And there is, I think there is quite a bit of filler on this album as well. Like I said already, the album's just too long in my opinion. And, um, it should have been shorter. The album is very consistent when it comes to the production. There's a lot of R&B, obviously, and pop, even some bubblegum pop in some tracks, and dance pop as well, of course Spanish and um, Latin influenced tracks as well. So if you want to reminisce about the good old times when you were a kid or a teenager in 2001, if you grew up during that time, definitely give this album a spin. It's very nostalgic. The sound of the album is very nostalgic. But I would definitely go back to her debut album on the 6 a lot more than this album. So what did you guys think of the album? What are your favorite tracks? Uh, maybe you love this album, maybe you hate it, tell me why in the comments. I also forgot to mention that this is a sexy album, which I wasn't expecting. Obviously Jennifer Lopez is a very sexy woman, um, her voice is sexy, and her music can be very sexy, but I wasn't expecting tracks like Come Over, track number 7, and also track number 11, Secretly, which were very steamy. And another theme of the album was relationships, obviously, and um, just typical relationship problems. The album is also about being strong and independent and knowing yourself and not being passive and just really sticking up for yourself and what you believe in 
when you're in a relationship, not letting people push you around, just really sticking to your guns and knowing who you are. So officially, I think that's all I wanted to say on the album, and in my next Jennifer Lopez video, we'll be jumping ahead one year into 2002 when she released This Is Me, then her third studio album. So anyway, thanks for watching, guys. You can find me on Instagram, you can find me on Twitter, you can message me, you can say, hey, how are you? And yes, so I will see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye.